on average, a million streams is around $4,000 USD. On Spotify. On Spotify. And we're averaging like 60 million streams a month right now. Across our catalog. things are just pretty crazy. And I don't think most people know that there's that potential because in music, you hear there's no money in streaming. But I'm like, that's because labels own 80% of your songs. But if you own your songs, there's a shit ton of money in streaming. Okay, welcome first. Um, so I don't know what the real intro of this is going to be, but I, I wanted to introduce this to you guys. Uh, Sam had put this on the calendar like, hey, we're recording with Connor and uh, Brianna. And I think he knows you guys in person or in real life or whatever. And he kind of loosely said, I was, uh, he said something like, oh, I was like, is that the rapper kind of music person? And then when I was doing the prep for this, I was like, oh, it's these people. These people, oh my God, I love, I love your stuff. I am so excited for this, uh, as you can probably tell, because I'm screaming, but I'm so excited for this because I think what you do is literally amazing. I think it is so smart and I think it is so impressive what you've done. Um, You know, we've had the chance to talk to Mr. Beast on this podcast and we've talked to Hassan Minhaj in the comedy world. We've talked to some Cody Ko on the YouTube side who you kind of look like. I think you you know that. Um, (laughs) But I do. I got to say, I think you are playing TikTok like a fiddle. I think you have figured out like the thing. Every platform that comes out, there's like there's like the people that like kind of come from the old world onto that and just kind of try to do the same thing, but maybe shorter or faster or video or whatever. Um, and then there's people who figure out that medium for what it is. And I think you figured out how to do music on TikTok like nobody else. Um, I don't know if you're a marketing genius or if you fell into that, but either way, it's working. And therefore, I am so excited to have this conversation because last night, you could tell I'm kind of tired because I was binging your content and I was just so inspired. I was so inspired. I don't do anything in the music world. I, I bet 99% of the listeners don't do anything in the music world. But I was so inspired just by what you were doing. So that's my intro of just uh, fanboy because I can't believe how good you guys are at what you do. That was the no, nicest awesome. intro ever. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, no, as far as the marketing stuff goes, that's all Brianna, um, which is why it's so fun to be able to do this conversation with her. Because um, we, we do everything together. Uh, but so so many of my ideas that have gone viral are, are her ideas. So let's give people a little context. And we could either explain mm-hmm. it or I do think it would be better to literally just show it. So I'm going to... I love the show sure. method. Right so I have a bunch that I liked. Um, dude, you know how much I like this? I was last night, so I'm doing this on my laptop and I'm not logged into TikTok and I kept hitting the like button and like, you know, I was like trying to like it and it's like create an account. And I almost created a second account just to give you the like because I was so... I felt like you deserved it. it. Uh, like, oh, thank you. You know thank when you, you feel like someone earned it? Yeah, that's, that's how I felt. <laughs> All right. so, I love it. Play a video. Play one of the videos. Yo, 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 what is he doing? Oh, yeah, so he was telling me that if you uh, if you cut a carrot a certain way, you can play it like a flute. He really thinks that's going to work? Apparently, it's a thing. Just ignore him. Ready? Uh, yeah, do me a favor. Pull up that... Pull up that one session we... Yeah, look, they said that I couldn't do it, so I went and... W's only, you know I've been winning, winning. Top of the world, the globe is spinning, spinning. If you know, you know I've been on a what mission? Mission. Go. Okay, let's get it. Got a little time on my hands, like a wristwatch. I don't got time for the breaks and a pit stop. Race through the gridlock, take it like Chris Rock. Right to the chin, still win. Heavy metals like Slipknot. Got the driving, I got tunnel vision. I just hit my stride the way I run the business. I've been making paper like I'm Gundam. If I see the end game, I got one division. Look, I don't ever bother with a critic. Hit him with a chronicle of Riddick. Boom. So you create these these little like um, opening skits, and you you don't hit them like okay traditional way of doing things. Somebody wants to be a musician, they're going to fire up TikTok and they're going to just play their song. Maybe they play their song with a music video already baked in. And if me if it's me and I'm just hearing the opening of a song, it's usually pretty slow. There's like a little bit of a build up, um, you know, just like the just a little bit of instrumental playing at the beginning. Or they might say, "Hey, I'm Sean." This is my new track. Give it a listen, right? Kind of boring, sort of begging for attention. Whereas you have these little opening skits that gets you curious of what's going to happen. You're playing all these characters like, you know, Eddie Murphy in uh, whatever that movie was. 
<laughs> you're, so you're Tyler Perry and you're playing all the characters. And then, right. then you hit them with a track that's actually like surprisingly good for how simple the intro is. I don't know how, how to mm. explain it, but this is how you got famous for doing this stuff on TikTok. Sure. Yeah. No. So I make music um, specifically in the kind of hip hop rap world, a little bit of pop sometimes. But yeah, so with the, the whole goal with these videos is to not make it seem like you're selling someone especially on TikTok, the moment you feel like someone's like, hey, check out my song, you're, you're going to swipe away. So you, you have to provide entertainment first. And we have found the best way to do that is through skits. Is and to- it, it was really easy because Connor's been acting since he was six years old. So it was the perfect way to kind of merge those two worlds. And it it worked. Yeah, I saw you were in a bunch of like, well, like Good Luck Chuck, <laughs> like a bunch of yeah. a bunch of movies. Yeah, started through. acting when I was six in Toronto, where I grew up. Started with commercials. When I was ten, I did a movie called Cinderella Man. I played the son of Russell Crowe in that film, and that was kind of the first huge project I was ever a part of. First time I went to LA for the premiere, signed with a US agent, and so from a kid, I've just been doing TV and film my whole life. And, and then when COVID hit and production shut down, I was like, "What do we do?" Um, I was working at. Alpha Paw at the time, the pet company. Um, I left that job, and then I was like, "Okay, Connor's really good at rapping. He's he's loved hip hop for so many years. Why don't we try marketing that?" And he didn't want to because he thought TikTok was kind of lame. Like it was <laughs> in the era where people just did those little dances. Right. So yeah, I took some YouTube videos he had filmed, turned them into vertical pieces of content. He's like, "I'm a thespian. I'm not going to be on TikTok. I, I'm an actor. I'm, 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 hey, I'm, I was I naive. Find, I make I, films. <laughs> my biggest regret is not starting sooner on like social media specifically. Yeah. I'd always been anti that. But. Once he saw a video well, go viral and then it translate to streams the next day. He's like, okay, maybe we can do that TikTok. changed everything. Yeah. Every, every time. So of, yeah. Let's pause for a sec. Yeah. We got to say the background here because people said alpha Paul. So basically I, I am friends with Ramon who then became me, Sean and Ramon are all buddies. Ramon is on episode two or three or four. Sean talks to him. He had a pet episode two. He had a, a soap opera company and then a pet company. I remember Ramon bought this pet business that seemed outlandish at the time turned into a, a successful business. I went to Vegas to hang out with them. I think I was there regardless. And I just went to hang out to the office. Brianna was his right hand woman running marketing and everything else at the company. I go to this brand new office that he has. And Ramon's like, uh, Connor is Brianna's wife. She, he's actually just going to help us move. He's uh, trying to make it in By the way, moving. Sam, or he's trying to make Ramon it in. Ramon told me that you showed up like uh, high on drugs because you were afraid of flying. So you're like, <laughs> you're like dope. I hated flying. <laughs> and I took up, I took too much medicine and I got to, I like, I was still figuring out the dosage and I got to the office. I was like, I got to go to sleep. So I was like all messed up. I was like, I'm sorry, guys. I'm like intoxicated. But I, met, I, I remember me- meeting Connor. Connor was, he was moving, moving, yeah. Yeah. He was moving boxes like you were because you were an actor and you were in between shit and you were just moving. And then like months later, he Ramon was like, hey, remember Brianna's wife or husband? She uh, he's like trying to actually become a rapper and he's actually good. And I'm like, the guy <laughs> moving? What? Really? I, I don't buy it. I, I don't buy yeah. it. And then you had like some traditional rap music videos and i'm like okay he actually is quite good then uh ramon was like hey uh brianna's actually left alpha paul and she and she's gonna take over his shit yep. and then i started seeing the tiktoks and i'm like oh my god this guy's <laughs> the best and then you blew up and now it looks like you have like eight million monthly listens on your spotify yeah. He, Ramon's telling me that you guys are independent. I think. Yep. So you like own all the music. Yeah. And he's like saying like, dude, their numbers for revenue are outlandish. You can say it if you want or not. Yeah. But like they're making a really good living. Now Connor's going on tour. He's with Hoodie Allen. He's in Europe. He's selling out shows in Europe. Yeah. And now you're like legit famous. It looks like your top song, Spinning, has 105 million downloads. The other one has 74 million. Like you guys are killing it. And I knew you just as this nice guy who was moving boxes. <laughs> yeah. And this was only... I think this was three years yeah. ago. This wasn't long no, ago. It, Maybe it all happened You know what? So the fast. first time we met was at a comedy show five years ago in 2018. Do you remember that? It was like a Chris Dealey yes. show. And then, yeah, you came to the office. I think you and I were like butting heads that day. And then Ramon's like, oh, he's just on drugs. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah, what Ramon told me, <laughs> yeah, Ramon sent a voice I, message to me last night. He's like, yeah, Sam came, <laughs> Sam came to the office, but he was like, you know, a little bit like doped up from the the, the flight. And he goes, you know, Sam normally asks like pretty direct questions. Like, Add drugs. Oh, Sam was and, getting behind everyone's laptops. Like, what are you working like, on? Why are you doing it this way? And I'm like, I don't I, remember I'm that. Like, Sam, I don't remember get that. Out I'm of sorry. Here. You're making my team nervous as hell. <laughs> and uh, Brianna, you don't know this, but uh, 
I also saw your work before we ever met because you were behind a lot of the ads. So Alpha Paw scaled like crazy. So Ramon bought this business. That's a dog ramp business initially. So it was literally like it was called Sausage Dog Sausage Central. Dog Central. Oh, that's right. Wow. Which is also what they used to call my dorm in college. But, uh, but then, so, <laughs> so, well played. So then, um, it's like little dogs use the ramp to get up on the bed or on a couch or down from the couch. I have four of them in my house because I got a little dog. And I also know Ramon. So he sent me four, four free ramps. The, so there was, uh, so the, these ramps are great. But I was like, how do you sell these? Like, are, are people looking for these? He's like, no, most people don't even realize they want it. So we got to like make ads that teach them that they want it. And I was just getting into e-com. I had, I was, Ramon's the reason I started an e-com brand because wow. I was sitting at his house hearing the Shopify ching, ching on his phone. I was like, dude, I want that noise in my life. How do you do that? So I decided to start one and he, to help me, he goes, he's like, here, um, I added you to my ads account, which is like basically like adding you as a co-signer on a bank account. Basically nobody gives yeah. their Facebook ad account to somebody else, but that's it's very Ramon, intimate. Ramon is that kind of guy, that kind of friend. And so I'm in the ad account and I'm looking at all your ads that you created because you had all these video ads that were working to sell pee pads and ramps and all this stuff. And I was like, damn, I need somebody who's good at creating ads. And I think was, is it right that you were just kind of like at that warehouse or you would just like come up with the concept yourself and figure out, like test them. Is that kind of where you got this like quick video like production? You and, you and your sister, I it think. It was mainly myself and Catherine. Do you remember Catherine? Um, Catherine and I ran the marketing and then my little sister would help me. But basically, we would just try and like either pull at someone's heartstrings. Like we would start a video with maybe an injured dog. And then instantly, a person that has an injured dog can relate to that. Right. And they're like, oh, like, and then we show the solution. And then a cute little dog. We literally bought a chihuahua. She's upstairs <laughs> just to use like for marketing ads. And we would show her trying to jump up on the couch. And instantly, everyone that has a chihuahua is like, oh, my dog does the same thing. Boom. Here's a solution. And it just freaking worked. It was wild. Like I, I couldn't believe it. We went from an office as big as a bathroom to like a twenty thousand square foot warehouse within a year. Yeah, I was, I was doing a lot of moving. Connor <laughs> was sure. moving a lot. Connor would help film. He would help edit the ads. Yeah, it was a family production. And then all the high performing ads we filmed in either our living room or Chloe's living room. Yeah, like in was, our house. And then when I was like, okay, I really want to do my own thing. We want to start a family. I need to leave this pet company. It broke my heart because Ramon's my best friend, but I had to ultimately leave. And I was trying to start other companies. I'm like, what can I start? I started like a coffee brand, a like a Christian brand. And then our friend Cliff Weitzman, he's the CEO of Speechify. Oh, uh, we know I Cliff. Believe, you know, yeah, I he, love Cliff. He, he, was, he says hello. I was talking to him this morning. I said I was going to be on. He, he wants to Yeah, say Cliff hi. was over for dinner and I was just venting my frustrations of product boredom. And he's like, Bree, stop. Like, this is your product. He's like, Chris Jenner, the shit out of him. <laughs> so the next day I stopped. I had a huge order and inventory of coffee and I let it go to waste. And I'm like, we're going all in on this. And I pretty much just used the same mindset I used to sell the dog ramps to sell his music. It's like, how can we hook someone in and how can we tell a story around this song? Because a lot of music these days is just like a really cool beat and like some generic lyrics. Right. But I'm like, there's a lack of storytelling. And I think that's what music online is missing and we did it so and we're doing it independently so so you can see it because as i was doing my my binge i, w I can't even call it research i was just uh, enjoying myself going down I, I did the tour de france down your your profile the first video actually on your youtube channel is pretty dope i don't know sam have you seen the very first video that they the first song that he oh, posted that s is that, is that is that the one where you rap about how you yes. have a yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 s yeah I, yeah, yeah, yeah what is it called the s word or what, what did you what did you call no, it it's just s, s just the letter s yeah. um yeah. so you rap about how you used to have a stutter and then in, in, yeah. in the song you're basically every like a bunch of the words start with s and uh, yeah. by the way you sent me down a, a watsky rabbit hole too last yeah. night like we love watsky. huge huge inspiration for that i never heard of watsky. him he's yeah. dope um so anyways the that's the first song and it's like okay this person clearly has talent but also, it's like, I don't know. Not this, different, the, the, yeah. It's never been easier to go on, I don't know, Fruit Loops and make a beat and and and, and then try to try to rap and like do 10, 15 seconds of a good rap. Like, that's, yeah. I guess, never been easier, would you say? Like, it's kind of more competitive than ever to do that part. Totally. Totally. I mean, there's what, 60,000 songs uploaded it every day? It might even day. be more. I think the data is closer to 100 now. But roughly, I'd say to be safe, 60,000 songs uploaded every day. Yeah, they, the, the the ease of being able to make music now, especially in the hip-hop space with with um, programs like Fruity Loops. And where, Splice, where you can sure. find samples royalty that are royalty-free. Royalty 
Um, it's yeah, a lot of people are making music way more efficiently than ever. And you can see like kind of the progression, like, okay, you're getting some views, you're putting out some good tracks, but like there was, all, I could almost draw a line and be like, then they figured out how to create like hooks for these videos. Yeah. It was the presentation. And then, nothing, it was how and to then everything was different song. after that. And is that when you joined, 100%. uh, Brianna, like, is that kind of when you Chris Jenner the shit out of them? <laughs> yeah. That's when I really stopped trying to do a million things and focus just on him. And the biggest moment for us was creating a series. That's when we started the Spin the Globe series where he would spin a globe and land on a country and collab with an artist. That took us from like here to like... Yeah, that took off like crazy. Like, that, 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 that first video that we did where we landed on Zambia and found the Zambian artist, that, that video has 72 million views on TikTok and 72 million views on YouTube Shorts. So uh, explain that video. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it, it was an idea where I had this song with this artist named Killa, who's this independent artist from Zambia. When we first worked with him, he had less than 1,000 monthly listeners. He had 189 monthly listeners. And now he's over a million because of that song, which is incredible. Wow. And it's like changed, changed his life. Um, but essentially, we were like, all right, how can we market this? And I was like, all right, we need a strong hook in the first two to three seconds. Here, hold on. Let, that's let, how let fast me play it. I want scroll. you to break it down. Sure. No, please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to spin this globe, and wherever my finger lands, I'm going to find an artist from that country to collaborate with me on a song. Let's see what happens. Zambia. All right, well, let's find out more about Zambia. I started researching some up-and-coming artists, and one guy really stood out to me. His name is Killa. He's a rapper from Lusaka, which is the capital of Zambia. I felt like his style and his voice would sound perfect on the song I'm working on, so I reached out to him, I sent him the beat, and then a few days later, he sent me back this. Yo, I know a lot of people praying for my downfall, but the only thing that I'll be down for is being top five, but like down four. I'm down to earth like the ground floor, but I've been flying so long, I tend to ask people, what's the ground for? Man, I'm only headed up. See, my flow volcanic. This the fire I erupt. Heard the fans getting rowdy because they haven't had enough. You know I'm running the city, you just running out of luck. Yeah, I said that with my chest, I flow hard. It's so that whole thing, five seconds there. Like, mm. the speed that you hit them with that initial hook. of like You're already started. You're like mid-word. You're like, all right, I'm going to spin this globe. Now you're doing something interesting visually. And, mm. and then you set up the, the premise, the stakes of like, wherever my finger lands, I'm going to find an artist and do a song with them, which, okay, I've never heard of that before. So where does this idea come from? And like, how much time did you put into that first, getting that first five seconds to be good? I was literally at the gym with Connor's mom and I thought of it and I texted him. I said, I'm, start, I'm stopping at Target. We're grabbing a globe. Here's the idea. <laughs> and his mom parked the car. I ran and got it. It was like 19 bucks. And to be honest, at the time, we didn't realize it would blow up. And we posted it on a Sunday, and it got 3 million views the same day. And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, this is a series. We have to do this again. And instantly, I went on my phone. I'm like, what country's next? And I searched hashtag Dutch rap because I really wanted a Dutch artist. I think that language is so beautiful. And I found this guy named Benz. Then we did episode two, two weeks later. And, and boom, that's spinning. And it That's the that. song that now has over 100 million streams on Spotify in less than nine months. That's so insane. That's an, it, insane. it is insane, yeah. yeah. Wow. So that first one that, that, that you were just playing, um, it really was just like, okay, how do we make content around the song? What's the contentable moment? And for, what's something visual? What's something visual we can do? Right. So for spinning, like the, the other one you played with the carrot flute, it, it was that idea of like, all right, this flute is such a strong element of the song. I remember watching a video back in the day where someone made a No, no, like, no, 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 Christian. Our brother-in-law was making a carrot flute at oh, Christmas. That's, that's and we're right. like, you're an idiot. What are you doing? And it actually ended up working. <laughs> and I'm like, what if we bring that into the video? <laughs> right. And then that's what made the song. Now people like call him like the carrot flute guy. And I'm like, what? So for this one, the contentable moment for us was like, all right, we have this artist myself from Canada. We have this other artist from Zambia, a country that most people don't even know where it is on the map. Mm -hmm. So you 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 actually you actually knew the artist you had the artist idea first and you're like how do we tell the story of that almost in you reverse engineered the story correct for this one we had the song first but for then, every other one we were right. like we had no idea this was going to blow up all our content that had performed well at this point was skits and every time we posted a non skit it never did as well so we really were just like let's see what happens I was very much inspired by like content creators like. Um, Mr. Beast. Beast, yeah. As you can tell from like the whole editing style, and I, I edit all my TikToks, and so like the one word at a time. I love how in videos it it starts the first frame you hear. All right, guys, today we're gonna blah blah blah. He right. just gets into it right away, and so I was inspired by that. Hence uh, this intro. That so we yeah, had. the first one we had the relationship with the Zambian artist first, but after the first episode, it was very organic, and we found the artists like literally two days before the song was recorded. And why do you think this video popped off like that? I think the hook is really strong. I'm going to spin this globe wherever my finger lands. It's like, all right, where, what's about to happen? Is he going to go there? 
um, or I'm going to find an artist. Immediately, you're interested where he's going to land. Right. And it's and then, it's it's visual. You see a spinning globe. Now, you, now you're going to stick around and see, all right, let's see where it lands. I land on a country like Zambia, something most people haven't heard of. And I say, I'm going to collaborate with an artist. Now there's another hook of, oh, what's this guy going to look like? What's he going to sound like? What's the song going to sound like? And then they stick around to Is the end. Is he even going to be good? Yeah. Right. Totally. And how many times did you have to spin that globe to <laughs> land on Zambia? Oh, gosh, I couldn't even tell you. Way too many times. Yeah, that's another good TikTok, like uh, totally. the behind the scenes. But yeah, every every couple seconds, like every four to five seconds, there's just something new. There's like a new, like if you're thinking of leaving, you're like, okay, wait, maybe I'll stay. Oh, I'm thinking of leaving. Oh, wait, I want to see him. Oh, he's about to start. I'll stay. Like there's even with the carrot flute video, you'll notice every time there's like a dull moment, we have a of the drill. Right. And it's like, oh, I'm staying. Like the weird brother pops in and like surprises. It's like every kind four of like to five seconds. We two or three to. seconds almost. Like the attention is about yeah. to lapse. Open up a new curiosity. Yeah. We, even, we even do that with the music creation. So if Connor's writing a verse and the flow is the same for too long, I'll be like, that's not contentable. I need you to switch your flow up faster so that there can be a new moment where the beat drops and the producer goes, oh. <gasps> Yeah. Like, yeah. When once we started seeing how well the content was doing for the music, I started approaching my my creative process with writing the music, thinking about what the content would be. And a lot of times the content would come first. So I would think, you know, that whole carrot flute video did so well. And then we started thinking, what other weird instruments could we use? And then we would think of a weird instrument like a xylophone. And then we made a xylophone beat. Oh, or one we wanted to do one where the fire alarm goes off mid recording session. But he's like, wait, stay that sounds sick and then they bring out the b-pad and, and make then a we, song we wrap over a fire alarm, alarm. Yeah, yeah yeah so a, lo a lot of times we would think of the content first and then make the song was there like a revenue number in mind that you guys oh, need God. to have in order to make this a full-time yeah, job Yeah, my my dream was like i want to make ten thousand dollars a month from this i'm like if we can make ten thousand dollars a month i'll be like the happiest person in the world and i don't know if i don't know if you guys know how it works but it's roughly there's a lot of variables but on average, a million streams is around four thousand dollars USD on and, Spotify. On Spotify, and we're averaging like sixty million streams a month right now across our so catalog. Things are yeah. just pretty crazy, and I don't think most people know that there's that potential because in music you hear there's no money in streaming. But I'm like, that's because labels own eighty percent of your songs. But if you own your songs, there's a shit ton of money in streaming, and I kind of <laughs> want to just bring awareness to that. Yeah. Well, what was like the, all right, so you guys were just doing your thing and then there was that, that pop moment. I, uh, what was the first month of sales on the pop? Like when it, when it, when the, t when the first video really worked out? There's a three month delay in accounting. So whatever you get from like January, February, March, you get it in April. And I remember that pop moment got us our first six figure month. Yeah. And we lost our minds. What were you making per month before that? Like, uh, was it like kind of, under ten thousand, under a thousand dollars to over a hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that Globe series really like. If I showed you the chart of my Spotify for artists, you see my daily streams were here, and then it just explodes like way up. What's really cool is that a lot of people have a big moment and then they slow down, they get comfortable. But the second we had that big moment, I'm like, we're pulling all nighters. We're going harder than we've ever gone. So you can see the chart; it goes up and it stays up, which is like the beauty of it because we didn't stop. Like. I literally remember our baby was sleeping. He was four months old during the Globe series. And we would take turns pulling all-nighters. Connor would be editing the videos, go in, give him a bottle, keep editing. It was crazy. We were on crack. I don't think we would... I don't know how we did it. But. I, last night when I was watching all the videos, I thought Connor is a genius. And then now I realized that Brianna's a genius, actually. And um, and actually, yeah, Connor, you could just absolutely. go get a drink of water. I just have a thousand questions for... This is so uh, amazing. So you really did... Chris Jenner, I'm curious, just for relationship point of view, uh, when did, uh, how did y'all meet and when did you meet? And like, at the time, was it like, I'm going to be a rapper? And you're like, you got it, honey. Keep, go for it. <laughs> no, we were 10 and 11 years old. <laughs> okay. We lived in the same apartment complex. Um, yeah, when I, when, when I was telling you earlier, when I did that movie, Cinderella Man, that, the, so the, the first time I went to LA for that premiere, uh, after that, I started staying in LA for a few months every year for auditions and stuff like that. And we would stay at this this apartment complex called the Oakwoods apartment, um, which was kind of infamous for having like a lot of child actors stay there. And Brianna's little sister, Chloe, used to act. And so her family and my family lived at that apartment complex at the same time. And I was 10 and she was 11. And that's that's when we first met. Yeah. And we stayed friends. We swapped AIM addresses. Oh, nice. and, <laughs> <laughs> and then like, it, it's just a cool story because you were supporting him, I imagine. I'm, I, I don't oh, yeah. know what, what the life of an actor is like, but you were, uh, you, you were, you were supporting him, and then 
you know, now you guys are a team. I it's mean, that's honestly, just like it's like flip flopped because his acting was much more lucrative than you think. Like when we first got married, he was on a series called X Company. He did three seasons of that. And he was a lead on that. And it does pay quite well. I don't know if I'm like contractually even allowed to say, so I won't. But at the time, he was more supporting me. And then I uh, was working and I did, I was a nanny at the time. So I wasn't like bringing in like huge amounts of money. And then I did the pet company stuff. And during that time, he wasn't working. So then I was supporting him. Yeah. And now we've come to this like even ground. We're working together and supporting each other and our family, my sister, my brother-in-law, my little brother, everyone quit their jobs and they're all working on our team. So it really just is a family operation. We go to coffee shops every day. They help us edit. They help us like manage the house. They're watching our baby right now so we could do this. My brother-in-law, Christian, mixes and masters all the music. He produces a lot of it. That whole carrot flute, he played that on the recorder. Um, so yeah, we, we, we keep it all in the family. Yeah, we all is- swap who supports who. And I knew, I'm like, one day there's going to be a point where we can all just support each other with this like big thing, but I don't know what's going to be. I wasn't expecting it to be Connor uh, rapping at music. all. We had a guy on the pod a long time ago. You, you might know him. His name's Mike Brown. And it's one of the earlier episodes. And I forgot what he was doing exactly. It was some like mineral oil expo- uh, exploration uh, thing. So he would go, he would basically yeah. knock on people's houses and be like, hey, did you know there's like some minerals under the ground that you live in? Um, and if you sign this paper that says like, cool, um, you have the rights to like get that, get those minerals out, dig those minerals out or whatever, mine them. Um, you can get paid this amount of money today. Up front, you can get this amount of money today. And if he got like, if there was 100 houses, he needed all 100 to sign. And if he got that, then he could sell that that bundle of of letters saying, yep, you have the rights to a company that actually does the mining. And he was making millions of dollars doing this in Texas. And um, he was like, yeah, I was doing this. And I was like, that doesn't sound like it takes a lot of people. He's like, no, it was just me. And then my, he's like, I, I brought on my two brothers. And I was like, oh, what's that like working with family? Because like, you know, you hear different things. This is before I started a business with my wife. And I was like, you know, what's that like? And he's like, uh, he just looked at me like I was stupid. And he was like, what do you mean? So it's, it's the best. And I go, oh, <laughs> I mean, like, I guess you guys get along or works out. He's like, no, of course, you know, it's not all perfect. But he's like, my theory of life is you find the people that you love and then you do life with them. And that just like that. has been ringing in my ears for like three years now. It's like find people you yep. love and then do life with them, find excuses to do things with them, whether it's work, vacation, or learning something together or joining a, you know, learning a sport together, whatever it is. Um, would you say that's accurate for, for you guys? Or do you guys have anything that maybe will ring in my ears for another three years about this? I'd say, I'd say it's accurate, but there definitely are like, we have to plan date nights or else we will never spend time together as a married couple. We turn into just business partners for a while and that's it. Or like, for example, we'll get in an argument as married couples do, but then we have a podcast interview the next morning or a video to shoot. So we have to put aside our pride of like who's right or wrong to make the work come first. Or my siblings, if they get in a fight, I just had this talk with them last week. I'm like, you guys are messing up my ecosystem. We have like a family <laughs> ecosystem right now. If you fight with you, then now Connor can't mix his music with him. And then if he's so everyone just freaking get along. So sometimes I have to like be yeah. that person that's like, stop fighting because business You're comes fucking first. up the juju. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. And then I'm like, there's a point where we're going to sell everything, make a ton of money, and then we can all live on a farm and fight all we want. But for now, freaking get along. <laughs> I can't find this client info. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform, so it shares its data across every application. Every team can stay aligned. No out of sync spreadsheets or dueling databases. HubSpot, grow better. And you just did a. So like the way that this is transferring to like actual wealth and money and everything is the Spotify, you get paid off that. I don't know if you can get paid off TikTok or not, but you just did a tour as well. So you, you and Hoodie Allen did like a, I think, what did you say? Two or three weeks? It was three uh, weeks in Europe. Yeah. I was opening for him. I actually wrote down our revenue streams just because I didn't want to forget. I'd say the <laughs> By top all means, are, go for it. Yeah. yeah. It's like Sam's going to ask about revenue streams. <laughs> I better be prepped. Yeah. We have streaming as the number one by far. We have YouTube money. YouTube actually pays quite well. In in regards to social media platforms, YouTube is like the platform. Yeah, I'll just say pay. this really quick because this is kind of cool. So I found out that in the... So I, I was pretty late to YouTube Shorts. I watched a Mr. Beast podcast where he was talking about, you know, YouTube Shorts being the future, da, da, da. And I was like, all right, let me just try this. And what I did was I took all my popular TikToks and because I edit them, I have them all on my computer saved and I just repurposed them on shorts and, you know, without the uh, TikTok right. watermark or anything, I took the original, you know, and just reposted. And then YouTube emailed us and they're like, you were the 
most subscribed to artist in November. Yeah. Of in, all artists. In the YouTube. month of November, I, yeah, they said I was Did you most just reply? Damn right. Send. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah. is there like a plaque for that or something? <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I got 800,000 subscribers in one month just, just from posting every day for a full month all my popular videos, including the Globe so, stuff. I, I heard something funny, by the way. I don't know if this is true or not. It might be a conspiracy theory. But somebody was saying like, uh, obviously, th this part was, I think, showed to be true, which is if you just re-upload your TikToks with the watermark, uh, like Instagram and YouTube, I think we're deprioritizing it. They don't it. like it. But uh, so the original file is good, but actually they also scraped the metadata, the name, the file name. I don't know if you guys are, is this true or are you guys aware of this? If, if you have the same like MP4 file name underneath, they also are trying to match that to just see like, Oh shit, we should start so changing our somebody file told names. Me that. I don't know if that's could, true or not. It could, it could be possible. I, don't know why I they mean, would care. I, like that globe video, we which, didn't change anything. Which is kind of weird that they both they both have exactly 72 million views on both <laughs> platforms. And, and I, I posted them months apart because, right. like I said, I was late to shorts. Um, so now because of YouTube, it, that's an extra five-figure passive income. So yeah, so that's, income. that's why I brought that up. Was I, Wh Which one grows faster, YouTube shorts or TikTok? What do you, where do you, who, which horse do you see winning? Oof, it's, it's tough because the TikTok tough. algorithm changes so much. But I think right now we're more excited about YouTube because YouTube lets you pin a comment and a link to stream the song. But TikTok doesn't. Oh, nice. They removed the pinned comment feature. So it's harder to convert TikTok views to streams right now. I had a call with TikTok and I said, bring that back. So hopefully they bring it back. <laughs> and even more interestingly enough, on TikTok, there. So <laughs> Could it be my manager too? Yeah, right. This is amazing. YouTube is much more creator friendly uh, as far as, you know, when you want to promote something like that, that video, um, the, that first Globe video that I post on YouTube, I was able to make the pinned comment, the streaming link for the song. Yeah, yeah. And that comment has like 40,000 upvotes. And so it, it definitely allowed people to get to the streaming way easier than TikTok. TikTok at this point too, even if you try to write the word link in bio or even Spotify, they'll hide the comment. And we've tested this. I've oh, written wow. that. I've posted that comment under my own video, logged into a different account to go there and the comment's gone. And so they don't want to encourage anybody off the app, obviously. So the business, it's, but finish this out. Uh, yeah. So it's Spotify, uh, it's YouTube. Then brand deals. Say, okay. uh, recently, like the last couple, you can negotiate like six figures, high six figures, depending on the ask. I'm sure we could get even higher, but like in our current state, current followers, it's like six figure deals. Syncs, which is like getting your songs in commercials or TV, video games, video games, all that stuff. Um, publishing. Um, can you explain publishing real quick in like two sentences? Oh, it's hard to explain in two sentences, but yeah, pretty much like a song has two parts to it. There's like the master, which is um, um, also called the sound recording, which is what the uh, streams are. Yeah, what the, the streaming royalties are. And then there's the publishing side, which is like the writers, the songwriters. Um, and so the publishing, um, you get paid for like performance rights. So if it gets played on the radio, if someone wants to cover your song and use your lyrics. So, so it's sort of like a different part right. of the pie. That, so uh, pub and then merch and then live shows. So those are like our one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven streams of revenue. And people don't know this. Like, I Are you just negotiating all this? Are you, I mean, that's very impressive if you're the one also doing the the publishing stuff and commercials and things like that. I mean, that's I badass. was up until like three months ago for the sinks. I still am. Like if he needs to get his stuff in a TV show or movie or a game, I'm still doing that. But for brand deals, we brought on a brand agent team because I just don't have the bandwidth. I was like losing my mind because being a, a mom comes first. And if Jude is sick or having a tough day and things are due, I'm like, I need someone else to take this. So. We do have a brand agent negotiating the brand deals, um, but everything else is us. And so you um, you have these uh, revenue streams. Most of the time I've heard that touring is like number one for a lot of artists. You put it at the bottom. We were just talking about this on a walk last night. I'm like, how are we going to talk about touring? Because it's just not, I don't like to speak confidently on anything we've never done ourselves. Yeah. Um, of course, if you're at like Drake, Taylor Swift level, blah, blah, you're bringing in hundreds and millions of dollars. But just for context, we opened on the European tour and I had a chart of the money. I'm pretty sure we just broke even on that right. one just because you have to like rent a bus. You have to pay a tour manager. You have to pay for everyone's travel, your DJ, merch. Blah, 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 like so the how, list how is do you endless. think about that? Because it's obviously a lot of effort. You got a little baby at home. Yeah. Um, you could, you probably reduce your output on TikTok because you're touring because it takes up yep. so much time. You're breaking yeah. even, but there's the fan love and you're like, okay, this means something and like that matters. Um, and you know, I think most artists just give you the politically correct, like, oh, I do everything for my fans and blah, blah, blah. But like, there's a reality. There's, there's trade-offs to everything. 
me and Sam experienced this in a super small level with the podcast where we did a couple live shows. They're fun, but they're a lot of work. You don't make mm-hmm. any money off of it. And mm-hmm. it's kind of like, well, that was just one episode. Like we could have just done so much more in that same amount of time. So we kind of, and we both, both Sam doesn't like to travel and I got little babies at home. So I'm not, I'm not looking to travel either. So we kind of don't do it that much. How do you guys measure that? Uh, think about that trade off of like the live fan experience, which is create super fans, but you lose all this other stuff. We found a really good medium for this. We met in the middle. Connor's booking agent. I totally forgot to mention her earlier, which is ridiculous because she's iconic. Uh, Connor's booking agent. Her name is Kara Lewis. She also reps like Eminem and a bunch of other really awesome artists. Um, and I've talked Only to her white about rappers it. She likes, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Young Gravy. Who else? No, she's got. She she had Travis Scott at one point. She's got Ice Spice right now. She, yeah. She's she's literally the best. There's an article about her, like, and it's called like the most terrifying woman in music. I'm like, I want that to be me. Like, that's me next. Anyways, so we've come to a conclusion with her that right now, while Jude is in these early stages of life, and we're really just trying to build, 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 we'll do pop up shows. So, for example, we're doing a pop up show in Chicago in November. And then we're going to do a pop-up show in Toronto, his hometown a few days later. And then he'll accept like festivals. Like, uh, like a month ago, he went to Calgary for a rodeo and he did a festival where they offer you a certain amount of money and you play for 45 minutes. I'm like easy. Right. He's gone for two nights. So we're going to do that. And then just keep doing pop-up shows to have fan love and like connect with the audience because it is really magical to hear people sing his songs back to him in person. Yeah. Um, but the we- TikTok experience is good too though because the thing about di- uh, digital stuff is well, I see it and even though I see 100,000 likes or tens of millions of views on it, I'm like, I, I don't know who else knows this. And then I saw the video of you in Europe and you do really cool TikToks of you like before the show and then during the show and I'm like, holy shit, this guy, this is a movement. You know, this is actually, uh, it's 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 sort of like when Casper and all these companies, the, like when digital companies started advertising and buying billboards in the uh, subways and shit like that, you're like, oh, it's actually adds value to see it in real life as opposed to just on my phone, even as a digital viewer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. That's a great comparison. Yeah. Yeah. So for us right now, shows aren't like live shows. Like a festival is a money thing. It is a revenue stream because he gets paid for like 45 minutes. But the concept of touring for us, it wouldn't be lucrative enough at this stage for us to invest the time energy, funds, blah, blah, blah into it. But when he does do shows, it's purely fans. I know a lot of artists will like charge for VIP meet and greets. I'm like, why am I charging a fan to say hi to you? They're the reason we have a career. No, like he'll stand outside and talk to absolutely everybody there for free. He'll go to the merch tables, sign merch. The venues will try and even like fee us for that. They're like, if he's at the merch table, there's going to be a fee. I'm like, that's so silly. But anyways, when we do do live shows, it's going to be completely just for the fans and not a, a revenue stream. How big of a venue can you sell out right now, you think? We've honestly never tested that because yeah. we've never done a headlining solo show, but I'll get back to you in a few weeks when we What's when your we guess? Do. You can guess. Our our hope is somewhere between 900 and 1,000. Those are like the cap, oh, the dude, cap, you're the gonna cap rooms that. we're looking at. Well, hey, well, you know, it's like... Here's the thing. So, I mean, technically, you could, like, who knows? You could sell out a 5,000 venue. Ten, like, you never know, but in the touring world, you have to like build a proof of purchase first. So like you can't just go from zero to booking a massive venue. You have to start at this venue and then your booking agent can negotiate this venue. And then this, because you have to like show them, hey, he sold X many tickets here. So now your venue should take him because you have to right. negotiate with like the, the promoters, the promoters mm-hmm. and the club owners. And so it's hard to say like touring is a tough topic because one, we're not versed in it enough. And two, it's too complicated of a business to be like, I can go from here to here. You have to build. It's not as much like TikTok where we can go viral overnight and your life changes. Yeah, it's true. Sorry if that's a lame answer, but it's just. So Mike Posner went to my high school, uh, my college when I was oh, there. Wow. And we were all like, this is a guy in the other building that's trying to become a rapper. Like, what is he talking about? And um, then he did. So that was kind of amazing. Um and one of the things he did when he kind of came back, so he like had his high, like the traditional way. And then he kind of hit a low where like he wasn't making hits anymore. Like his first album was like whatever big. And then like he kind of dipped a little bit and then he like reinvented himself and he's like, I'm going to walk across America. So he started doing things that I thought were interesting because it added new layers to him, new dimensions, new content, kind of like ideas. And he wasn't doing it for that reason, but it worked well also. And he would do these pop-up shows just in a park. Where he would just be like, I'm just going to start playing in this park and see what happens. But like, 
and like it kind of didn't matter what happened live. Like some people got a magical experience that came or were there. Most people weren't there, but he's like, what does it matter if like, okay, if let's say there's 50 people here that are having like a hundred out of 10 experience. Cause like something over the top cool just happened. And okay. I don't have 900 other people here, but this video looks so interesting and it makes me more interesting than the, how a traditional artist does it. So the content would always pop off and his brand would be kind of like the people's champion in a way that he would just do these free shows in the park rather than, um, rather than like how, you know, an artist would That's traditionally awesome. do things. So I think, you know, there's something to flipping touring on its head and be like, I am going to do these fan things on my own terms, yeah. but I'm actually going to do them optimized for content and not filling venues because, Content's my game, anyways. And if I just keep building that mountain, right? That's what Mr. Beast does. He's like, if I just I like keep that. building like this that. mountain on, it on always, digital, it like that's everything what in this business, it's like, what's your goal? Like, if your goal is to be a mega superstar and perform in arenas, then yeah, sign with a label and do those things and dedicate your life to building your touring resume so you can get there. But that's just not our goal, at least right now. So we're just focusing on making as much music as possible. Cause I, f- I forgot who said, it. I think it was this artist named Mike Studd. He compared songs to real estate. He's like, if you can buy a piece of real estate every two weeks, why wouldn't you? Some of them will remain shacks on the beach, but some of them will be mansions in Laguna. So right. that's our mindset right now. I'm like, we're investing in as much real well, what estate. What is your songs. goal? What's like your, what's like, do you guys have like a, like, do you want to do this for 30 years? Are you trying to you just get super rich? I mean, like, what's like, like what, your, what, what do you write on the whiteboard or on the fridge? Business, business. Like he loves the art and we love to make good music, but ultimately the goal would be to scale this. Like we would scale a business and then uh, potentially sell the catalog someday because it can be evaluated similar to a what number? What number excites you? 50 million. At what age? Three or four years from now. Yeah. Okay. I'll be your advisor. No charge. Just mm-hmm. add a zero to that number. Because okay. that, like, you guys, uh, fifty is you guys. You're already fingertips away. Right, fine, Sean. How's a hundred million? No, no. Add a, a five hundred is the number. Uh, what did What did Bruce Springsteen get, dude? I think Bruce Springsteen got three hundred. You know, I want to say something here that's a little bit. So I've, I've definitely. Uh, this is probably the most I've ever like you know complimented any guest on this podcast before. Oh I'm usually God. even if I like him, I you know I'm hard to get a little bit. Uh, Sam's usually just like. Sam, Sam usually fangirls pretty easily. He's like, he's like, so you're hot. And I just love people that are hot and like, you know, you're fit. So like, you know, you're awesome. And, uh, you know, I usually keep it, you know, a little close to the vest, but, but you guys are, you're the, you're the creative version of hot. And I think that's amazing. And you're hot. You guys yeah, are both hot. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, that too. <laughs> we'll, we'll take the physical as well. The <laughs> thing that I would say that's kind of an insult is when I watched you on YouTube, I didn't have the same fun as I did on TikTok. So like I watched the full songs. Mm. And I was like, these are good songs, but I didn't like, you know, I wasn't like hooked and I wasn't um, like, I wasn't as like, I felt like the things you guys are doing on TikTok, I've kind of never really seen before. It felt so original and um, it almost felt like a different thing than like music, which is like a thing I understand. And uh, there's a bunch of like pre-established music options that I can go to. I'm curious, do you guys feel this? uh, A, do you feel the same way? And B, like, is there any part of your ego that's like, no, I w- like I want to be a traditional take me serious rapper versus like, no, this kind of like these TikTok quick hooks, almost like half songs. That's my thing. And I'm actually creating a new lane over here. How do you think the, about it? The goals are different on those platforms. On TikTok, our goal is to reach new listeners. And YouTube is more to nurture the listeners we already have um, and to nurture the platform because it does pay well. So more views on YouTube is more money in our pocket from the AdSense and stuff like that. But yeah, with YouTube, we're not approaching those long form videos with the goal of reaching new people, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain. And then also sometimes if the videos are a bit more polished, like for example, he did a song with Baby No Money and that was a very polished music video. But like, that's like Baby's team. Right. They were like, all right, if we're going to do a song with Connor, Connor's got to jump into our world and do a music video. I'm like, great, then you got to jump into our world and do a skit. So yeah, well, the thing about your skits is like, first of all, I, like I I see a, a TikTok video and then I listen to you guys when I work out. Like I I associate it, it goes video first, then I listen to you while awesome. I'm exercising. Great. That's our goal. But I um when I see the video, like you do this, you have this amazing thing where you basically you're clearly an actor. You have three characters. You have the producer, then you have you the rapper, and then you've got your nerdy brother or cousin or whoever he's <laughs> supposed to be. Brother, the yeah. guy who yeah, like the guy who wears the turtleneck. And I get to know the characters. 
and you do such a good job. I was telling Sean, I was like, I forget you forget that it's you. it's Connor. Yeah. Like you, you do even obviously it's you, you don't dress up or anything, just the same person. You do such a good job that I, I'm getting to know the characters. It's very much so like cute. uh the Dr. Doolittle or whoever it was, Will, you know, Tyler Perry, where they played the it's the same actor doing multiple characters, but you're not even dressed up. I get to know the characters and I like see the the weird brother come in and I'm like, oh, he's about to do something funny. <laughs> um, and I get to know the the personality of the producer uh, version of you. It's so good. You do such a good job of like adding characters that when I listen to the songs, I am like I'm remembering that video and that's what makes me like it. Oh, Whereas awesome. if it was just the songs, they are good. But I the 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 skits add so much meaning to it. I'm like, oh, this is the carrot one. You know what I mean? That's so cool. Um, and the funny thing is, so like like music, uh, like if you listen to an album, they they've always done these like skit type things in them. Like back when I used to have CDs, like Kanye's you know uh, college dropout album, there would be these little skits, but they weren't that good. And like they 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 weren't that funny. They were kind of long. And like um, so th- that concept's been around. How did you guys come up with this idea to have these characters? How did you come up with the idea for the characters? Uh, like, what, what was the inspo behind <laughs> the that? The characters was really just like, we don't have anyone else. Like, we're really like, yeah, we don't true. really hang out with many people. Uh, we couldn't think of anyone who could play these characters as well. So I'm like, kind of just freaking put on glasses and just be. <laughs> yeah, it was just, character. it really was just the most efficient way to do it. And I I had control over the whole process because I was... I film it all myself. I set up my iPhone. He'll film them late at night when the beat. It's like, well, you can't coordinate that with other people. Like, hey, can you, can you, can you come over at 11 p.m. for a TikTok? Like, no one's going to do that. So we just do well, it all ourselves. Well, you still do a good job of getting, like, you have this other video. Uh, I forget. I don't even know who the rappers are. Like, eventually I figure out, oh, this that's Hoodie Allen. But in the video, I'm just like, oh, it's a, the skit is like, it's a late night thing. The janitor has to fill in. Yeah. And I just know the actor as the janitor, not even the rapper. And then you see him <laughs> rap it. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's really good. This is like really Thank creative you. stuff. We would um, love to, our dream would be to like um, almost make a, not a parody, but of like the office, but call it the studio where we can kind of extend these characters a bit right. more and like go a bit deeper into them and maybe bring on a few new, like if we have a episode of the studio where Connor's all these characters and then the guest is like Idris Elba comes in. And he acts on it. And then we get Courtney Cox to come in on the next episode. And we use these connections Connor has from acting to now elevate his TikTok skits. Yeah. That'd be fun. And then I have another dream of like pitching Spin the Globe to Netflix. I'm like, how cool would that be if it's a 45-minute episode of Connor spinning the globe, lands on a country, but then he actually flies there and we meet the artists and we see their culture and we see the music scene there. Like, for example, Zambia, we have to go there because it would blow your mind. He couldn't send us his video because he only had 12 hours of electricity allotted like per day. Wow. And he said, until we get a heavy rain, the government will not increase our electricity. So I can't send you my video clips. So we were waiting to post this episode because you don't have electricity in Zambia to send these videos. So I'm like, I want to go there and see this and like bring awareness to it. And I think that'd be so cool because you have food shows on Netflix. You have like Zach Efron changing the world. Everybody like, feeds Phil. Everybody fe- or somebody feed Phil. Yeah, I'm oh, like sir. Connor should go there and do that. But for music, I think that'd be so sick. Well, you, there's a few. There's a few like paths here. I think, and there's a few examples. One example, which it, it, I, I'm not relating it as an insult, but Weird Al Yankovic. Mm. Like I bet you, I don't know this for sure, but I would bet you that Weird Al probably out earned most every artist from the 90s. I bet you he crushed it in terms of, obviously, it was in the CD era where it was $22 for a CD that costs 50 cents to make. But I bet you Weird Al crushed it. And then the other guy, and again, I'm not saying it's just because he's another white rapper, but Lil Dicky, you know, he's got that awesome show, Dave. Dave he's done amazing. a really good job of parlaying this thing into more than just music and you rapping. You what it's- I wish Dave did, though, which I was so disappointed in? The songs on the track were so good. And he's just now releasing them. I'm like, those yeah. songs should have been out because I would have streamed it. Yeah. So not only are you making money from your show, but you're also making money because your Spotify is about to go up. So that's another thing. If we were to do Spin the Globe, all the songs would be out. You watch the episode and then you can instantly stream it. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's another part of our rollout is is we we don't promote the song until it's out. Some people promote the song months in advance. They do pre-save campaigns, stuff like that. What were you going to say about that, Sam? Well, what I was going to say was you, Weird Al and Dave are like, uh, I actually think Weird Al is even more talented than Dave, but they're both like this like kit- cutesy type of thing. I actually don't view you that way. I view you as like significantly more serious. Like you, like you're not like I- I'm laughing with you, never at you. Whereas with Dave, it's usually at you know what I mean. But he's still done a really good job of taking these over the top music videos and turning them into a thing. But uh, 
I actually think that you have more potential than him for sure because uh, with you, you're relatable, but at the same time aspirational and like you're still serious, but at the same time funny. I don't know. I just that's I think such that, a nice compliment, but it's so hard to respond to because that <laughs> that's just hard to respond to. I don't know how else <laughs> to word it, but we love guess, Dave and he's little Dickie's so good. And I'm just in. I just admire you guys. I just I think that you like you're you're gonna you're just you you both have the it factor, and it's so evident. And I think the reason Sean said add a zero to it was because we don't know anything about music, but we've hung out with a whole bunch of rich people, a lot of billionaires and shit. And like you see like some patterns in certain things, and it's like oh well, this is yeah. Th- like we don't know how big this is gonna be. It's already big, but it's gonna be significantly larger than the way it is now if you have a little bit longer of a time horizon and just keep like doing pretty good. How long does it take you to create to create a video or a video with a song? So w- what is the creative timeline for for you know one of these that you make? It could be like Are we I'm talking looking at the your... songs made or the song isn't made yet. Yeah, I guess either way. Or like for example, this uh the, the top video right now on your TikTok is this collab, the branded collab that you did. Um uh, yes. with Ruffles and KFC. Um yep. so you did that. I assume you Basically, had to you made something specific for that? It wasn't something you already had made, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how yep. long does a process like that take you when you're going to create something from scratch, or is it just some days it's one day, some days it's three months? It's hard to say. Like, do you have a kind of a consistent f- uh, formula for creation for songs? Some days it can be three hours, and some days it can be weeks because he's stuck on something. Sure. Yeah. But for videos, I'll script something in like 20, 30 minutes, and then he'll film himself for a few hours. And then he'll edit for a few hours. Yeah, on average, I'm probably filming for one or two hours and then editing for one to three hours. And do they all have to be full songs? Or do you just do like, I make you know, three verses and that's for this TikTok video, but I'm not turning it into a full song. Do you ever do that? No, for, now we only will invest time in a TikTok if it can convert to streams or else right. that's just not uh, f- lucrative for us. I, was, I have like brain fart. But yeah, uh, for Ruffles, they only requested a 30-second demo. So for that one specifically, he only had to write 30 seconds of a song. Boom, right. done, easy. But normally, it's a full song needs to be done or we won't post it. Because TikTok doesn't pay you for views. Yeah, but it so. does indirectly. Because uh, let's say something goes viral. Now your fan base grows. The next video you put out with a song, uh, you know, it's going to pay. Oh, like, totally. Um, you know, one thing but if the song is out, we can show you the charts. It'll be like... Pfft. Like right, it's so right. much different if the song's out, yeah. But I we, hear what you're saying. But like uh, you know, for uh, I, I admire people who kind of like uh, there's a temptation anytime you're doing something new uh, because new stuff is so unproven. There's a tendency and a temptation to like take the energy and the momentum from the new thing, but shift into the proven game. So, for example, I did a comparison once of Joe Rogan's podcast, <clears throat> which is like an interview talk show type <clears throat> type of thing, and I compared it to the top, like uh, the Tonight Show. And I was like, okay, you know, just, I forgot who was the host or which show I did, but like, let's say Jimmy Fallon was the, the host of the show. And it's basically like, if you just compare across every key metric, so it's like audience size, Joe blows, a, Joe's podcast blows away Jimmy Fallon and actually has for years and years and years. Like once Joe got the Spotify deal, then it was like, it got kind of like legitimized. But way before that, Joe was making a ton of money and a huge audience, like five years before that. But people didn't think of it like a business because they just didn't have a headline of $100 million a year to Spotify to like latch onto. So audience size, Joe is bigger. Uh, Production, it's Joe's podcast, I think is Joe, Jamie, and like maybe one other person. So like three or four people total to pull off that show. The Tonight Show has like 50 people behind the scenes just to like run one show. Um, Like episodes per year. He has like more output with fewer people, bigger reach. And the only thing that was missing was like, it wasn't didn't have like a category that it fit into really. It was like, oh, it's a podcast. Okay, podcast. Like, is that a business? I don't really know. Like, seems like there's a bunch of those. Um, but Joe stuck with it. And like he had a lot of offers to do other things, but he just stuck with it. Let it build, 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 build. So that then by the time, you know, it got really, really big, he could promote whether it's his own product, like on it or some other, you know, athletic greens or whatever, some product that pays him and start making ludicrous money. And Mr. Beast kind of does the same thing where like he flirts with this idea of like, I could go create a Netflix show. But the reality is if you talk to him and you've seen him do what he's been doing over the last few years, it's just like build audience, build audience through this. Like what he's like, why would I leave YouTube? I can reach more people than the Super Bowl. And you're like, mm-hmm. yeah, but it's different, but he's kind of not wrong. Like he, he is right. It seemed like this frivolous thing. And then I, now people see Mr. Beast as like kind of a business entrepreneur guy, but like 
it's because of like, it's because he committed to this new lane like many years ago. And I guess what I would say for you guys is it seems like you guys have a new lane of this kind of like what I'm, it's almost like fast fashion, but for music, which is like these TikToks that are hooky and, and catchy and skit based. And like, they can get millions of views and build you a huge fan base. Um, and it, I actually think if you just stay with that and you don't, try to be a traditional musician, you're going to end up way bigger than all the traditional musicians. It's the problem is it's just like a little bit unproven where that goes exactly. Or like, and it's very tempting to like take offers from legitimate brands and, and le- legitimate like paths that you've heard of. But before. the good news is you're, you're making millions of dollars along the way. You're making millions now. So right. at least it's at least you're, you ain't broke. And we've talked to every major label. It's, it's not like I, I, our friend Nick said that he's like, we're independent by choice, not by default. Because you'll see in the comments, like, why hasn't anyone signed this kid yet? Someone signed Connor. And I'm like, they've tried. We will not because that's not our goal. Our goal is to like do this ourselves, do things the way we want to do it. And honestly, like prove to other people that you can do it. Um, Because I had no idea that this was possible. And I'd love for other people that are making music to know it too. How old are you guys? I'm 29 and Connor's 28. Wow. And... Early on, I remember you had this cool video with Courtney Cox, and then you had another one with, uh, what's his name? Idris. Idris. Idris, or, Idris, Idris yeah. Elba, yeah. yeah. Those are cool. Have you had any other uh, like heroes or celebrities reach out that you that floored you? Um, there's one guy I really look up to. His name is Russ. He, he's uh, a I huge... Like Russ. Yeah, he's a huge independent artist. He really kind of wrote the blueprint that I followed if as far as... If you want to talk to ind- someone about independent touring, it would be Russ, because I know Russ does it, and he sells out massive... like. If you want to talk about the financial part, the business part of touring, he'd be the one to talk to. I love I, I, his his song "Civil War" gets me pumped up. Great song. Yeah, he's he's amazing. But yeah, Russ Russ reached out. And yeah, so he love. he like DM'd and showed love, which is just really cool because he's sort of been my north star as far as just like how to do this independently. He, he wrote like unsolicited advice: stay independent. You'll be making M's like clockwork. And I'm like, that's all I needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, Russ. <laughs> yeah. so that was that was a really cool one for me. Yeah. He only talks in raps too. That's amazing. Uh, his his DMs Dude, are also it's, raps. It's, it's so hard because the, the the DMs are so like. Um, Simu reached out. Oh, he's Sim, awesome. Simu Leo, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's amazing. Um, I, yeah, I can't. I'm like, you know, when yeah. people ask you a question on the spot and you're like, name a song, and you're like, uh, I don't know any songs. <laughs> Yeah, there'll, there'll be random things where like I'll notice on TikTok, like, oh, Logan Paul liked the video or T-Pain liked the video. Like, you know, there'll be little things like that. That's cool. But as far as like directly talking to someone, the, the big one that comes to mind is, is Russ, just because he's someone who I'm trying to emulate uh, as far as the business goes. I know you're in Vegas. Is it translating into off the screen stuff? You know, are you walking around uh, downtown Vegas and people are coming up to you? Has, has that been happening? Yeah, that's, a ton? that's been the weirdest part because, like I said, we stay in our bubble and we hadn't been leaving the house much, especially during COVID. And then we went on a trip to Salt Lake City because we love Utah. It's so random, but we went there and it was a ton. And especially at the airport, like the TSA agents are always like, oh my God, wait. They'll like look at his ID and then be like, the music guy. They're like, <laughs> we love your stuff. And I'm like, that's crazy. But the best is when little kids come up. And they have their little, are you a YouTuber? <laughs> and they're so cute. And it's like, hey, yeah, what's up? And we had like a five-year-old super fan come to Calgary to meet him at the rodeo. And Connor took him to Tim Hortons for donuts. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's really cool because you get to see it translate in real life. And especially when it's kids. And you're like, oh, that could have been like a core memory for that kid. That's really cool. Yeah. Now yeah, that been, you been are... Cool. Winning in one lane. What I found is that when when people are are let's say winning and let's say that right now you're winning in like this content music game, um, you'll often see it's like kind of like Neo in the Matrix. You sort of see the game a little differently. You sort of see opportunities that you know, like oh, I feel like other people could be doing this in this other lane, or we could do this, but you know, you know, we think that would work, but you know, we just have our hands full, so we're not going to do it. But like. Do you, have you seen any what I call adjacent opportunities for either content creators or on the business side? Like, have, have you, you you've come from a business brain, right? So, like, do you see yeah. other opportunities? I just we, had one the other day. This, this guy Kevin, he has this account on Instagram called Icon Brick, and he makes Lego animations. And I've seen a couple big rappers and labels hire him to make Lego animations for their songs. Long story short, he's an incredible songwriter, and I was telling him the other day, dude, put out your own music and use this platform you're building to promote your own music. Like, yeah, every like 10 to 12 videos you're doing like other rappers, but then slide right. in one of your own videos in there with your song. 
wow, this is sick. I'm watching one of these videos now. Oh, they're incredible. We're actually re- we're, uh, releasing a song with him in a couple dude, he weeks. only has 127,000 followers. You, you, you're buying early on this guy. This, this yeah, is great. Yeah, dude, he's, in, he's insane. I'm like, that's a double revenue stream. You'll be making money from labels paying you to make Lego animations of their songs. Meanwhile, you'll be pocketing uh, Spotify revenue for your own songs. So that's like a perfect example. Um, that just one happened. That one happened recently, so I can think of it. I can't think of any others that are super recent. You know what's crazy is with TikTok, like it's just crazy how sound bites are becoming songs. So mm-hmm. you know, like there's that one on TikTok where where it's that lady going, uh, "I want to thank my man. Thank you for my man." Thank you, know you what my I'm talking man. About? I saw that the other day. It was just a. So she said that it's at a. a like, like, yeah, she she just said that at a uh, at a uh, award show, and that turned into a clip, and then. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it was just it was her saying it, and I don't know if she did it or someone else turned it into a thing. And then there's this other one where the, there's this guy. He's got a 30 second video um, uh, where he talks about his uh, his boo thing, uh, uh, but it, <laughs> it it it's literally a 30 second clip of him rapping. And I'm googling for this guy, and he's got it has a million likes on Instagram on Reels. And I'm googling to find, I'm like I want to see the whole song. It's not even a song. There is no whole song. It is just like a, his 30 second clip, and it's it's pretty amazing how. Uh, like things are happening with music where like it's just a, a clip of a thing it's not even real oh, i guess but. the best example of that is the corn kid remember that kid that was like i love corn <laughs> and it became this viral song on tiktok for like six months <laughs> yeah it's amazing to start but that's like, actually see. something we've clocked and we've wanted to be uh careful of because sometimes people have their song go viral the sound but people don't connect that sound to, to the artist yeah so there were a couple like viral sounds. If you asked me who the artist was, I'd have no idea. So I was like, we need to be very cognizant of that and like make sure that we attach you to the songs as much as possible, which is why we're so like long form skit focused rather than like, let's make a sound pop off. Because it's great. It could be like a moment and a spike for a song, but long term, the goal is to attach Connor to his music more. Do you, uh, on your way up, like kind of like when you were moving boxes at the Alpha Paw Warehouse and you're, you know, in between acting gigs, you're maybe trying to make it in the music game and it's it's not obvious you're like now you're winning and winning feels great but you probably spent many years losing this is how i felt mm-hmm. in the world of entrepreneurship i yeah. from the ages of 21 to 29 i was only doing startups that failed that's like mm-hmm. i don't know eight years straight of just getting my ass kicked did you like dread going to family events because we dreaded it because it's just like the hey how are things going how how's, are the, things? how's the little music thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, people would be like, what's what's the new one? Because they're so used to me every year having a new story about the new thing that's going to be the big thing. And I was like, oh, damn, sure. they're right. There yeah. is always a new one. Fuck. Uh, like, I wish just one of these was the one. And, uh, you know, like, that that was it. So was there any, I guess, like, moments you remember from the kind of the bottoms uh, that, like, you know, either a decision you made, a, a talk you had with yourself, some advice you got that, like, sticks with you or, or helped you during that time? It was just, it was Brie. It was like, you know, I, I, I don't have a a bunch of friends, which that sounds strange. I'm, I'm, I'm a very social person and I get along with everybody, but my, my core circle is very small and I spend 90% of my time with Brie, whether that's us working together or we go on walks every night and we just talk about stuff. And yeah, there was definitely a period, especially when COVID hit and productions completely halted. So I had already a year before that been struggling to get acting work. And then now there weren't even auditions and I was definitely at a low point and it was like, what do I do? And, um, Brie, Brie was somebody who very early on I had shown my music to, and this was prior to me show. Like I, I used to just record at home by myself. I didn't show anybody. It was just a hobby I had cause I loved hip hop, but I was afraid to put it out into the world because I was afraid of the judgment I would get. She even for- had an alter ego called He's gonna kill me. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no. It's called go. unidentified. Yeah, un- <laughs> unidentified. I used like a fake name, and I would up. I would used to upload music on YouTube anonymously, just because I wanted to see what people would think about it. And without, I was like, "That's stupid." <laughs> right. Uh, without like attaching me to it, and I was afraid what my friends would think. Like, oh, of course, like the actor wants to be the rapper now, and I, I was like frozen with um, judgment, judgment fear. fear. Yeah, exactly. And and Bree has always, from the very start, just been such like like my, my number one supporter and has given me the confidence. And so when I was in that low point and, and music was something that I was sort of playing with, she was like, go all in on this. Trust me, try it. Like try TikTok. Like what's the worst that's going to happen? Like nothing's going on anyways, you know? And so (laughs) she, she was the one that instilled that confidence to like, go for it. And Ramon instilled that confidence in me. 
because ah, I, like that, yeah. I got hired at the pet company as a social media assistant. And I met Ramon. And then after that, like a month later, he's like, yeah, no, you're my creative director. A hundred percent. And anything I ever wanted to start, he's like, I'd be your first investor. I'd be your first investor. And he believed in Connor so much. So I was taking that confidence from Ramon, who was my mentor, and I instilled it in him. And Ramon told me he was like, I'm, I'm, I'm whatever they're doing, I'm in. And I'm like, you're an idiot, man. There's no, there's no <laughs> money in music. Like, what's there to invest in? There's nothing to invest in. And he was like, I don't know, but <laughs> whatever. Something. There's something here. Well, I'm in. And you were, and, you were uh, homeschooled. He, was on board. he told me. I was homeschooled. You yes, up until siblings? high school. I went to a uh, public high school, but prior to that, I was homeschooled. Yeah. And uh, do you think that that like did that help you in any way in terms of you know of, what? Like, I think so because when I was homeschooled, I used to like start businesses. I showed Ramon my business card. It was like Brianna Peterson. It was like violinist, pianist, vocalist, dog walker, pet sitter, babysitter, <laughs> hire me for anything. Like I would, I just had so much time on my hands and also creatively, I would write children's stories. I would, uh, I have old videos from the apartment complex. I wanted to be a director. So I would go around filming all the kids, um, like documenting their lives. So being homeschooled gave me a lot of time on my hands. And I think it gave me like a, a need for creativity that most kids didn't have. Because when you're in school, you're constantly entertained by other kids. But I just had my siblings and I, so I had to come up with ways to entertain ourselves. So we would remake Spy Kids. We would remake Disney movies. Like we would film them ourselves, edit them. Like, so all my family jokes, they're like, you've been doing this since you were like four. Yeah, you've always been making content. Yeah, so no one's asked the homeschool question before, and I never really thought of it till now that I guess homeschooling really did correlate because it like forced me to be creative. Well, the we we have like a large male. Most of our listeners are men. The takeaway here is like, get yourself a strong woman to <laughs> be your partner here. I mean, like, <laughs> like, um, like this is this is like a good. This is a really great marriage. It seems like it, you got to get yourself a strong woman to to help make this all happen. Um, I'm a like huge it, fan it, of uh, uh, Alex and Layla Hormozzi. I think that they're a superpower couple. You know what? They live in Vegas. I think so. I'm like going to try and run into them at Milk <laughs> Bar one night because <laughs> they never <laughs> skip dessert, whatever they say. But they're a huge inspo for the husband and wife business relationship because there's really nothing cooler like we get to work together be parents together be well married. i think most people actually it's horrible you guys make it work because you're you you are both emotionally stable you have similar values it seems you have similar goals i think in most cases it's not, it's not awesome i think working with family in most cases is horrible well thank you no i mean and we have our moments i don't want to make it seem like it's always just so so easy because like brie had kind of alluded to earlier it's really easy to fall into this like we work together, we're coworkers mentality when every so often it's important to remember that we are husband and wife and we need to find we're, that balance. So we're um, coworkers who kiss. What's the big, what's the deal? Hey, right? Exactly. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> we all do it. Yeah, don't tell <laughs> each other. Um, you, uh, we'll leave it this, uh, Sam's about to be a dad. You guys recently, uh, had your first baby. Yeah. Any, uh, any advice, by the way, th Sam, have you heard it? their, their song about, about their son? About the son? Dude's the, there's song. a line in there. He's like, uh, what is it? It's like, you got my eyes and I got your back. I was like, oh, that's sick. Yes, that's a good line, dude. dude. I, like, I remember watching that video and I was getting emotional. And and that's why I was like, I think you're better than Weird Al and Dickie and all these people I mentioned before is because, like, I see your stuff and, like, they don't inspire me. I like them. You inspire me. I won't take any more little Dickie slander on this podcast <laughs> for the record. Uh, I feel like, you know, I let the first one slide. The second one, you know, he's I just cool. Well, I see Cutter stuff, and I'm like, oh, like Lil Dicky is like, oh, bro, you like, just haven't looked into like, it enough, dude. He, I'm no, he's send inspirational. You a, a I'm but staying like, out of this conversation. You guys, <laughs> yeah, he, I don't, don't want to get I any, this, uh, uh, any, <laughs> any dude, beefs here. I love him, but he like his character of like this neurotic Jewish guy of like always complaining. Like I, I don't think I want to be you, or like I want to learn from you in terms of the day-to-day -day life it's more so your career is amazing and i respect it and i like your music but with connor like when i saw that song i'm like dude the values that you're talking about the songs like i'm on board with like it, it, i've been I i'm inspired to live a little hearing, bit better i love hearing this from sam and i'll i know we have to wrap this up but i'll just to jump on this point so many artists have come to us and they're like connor needs more of a brand i'm like what do you mean they're like he's not he's too normal like he looks like every other guy on your street blah blah, blah. and i'm like i'm pretty sure that's why people really like him 
because and you're way hotter than the can... average guy. Let's be real. <laughs> Sam, what's up with you and like hotness? <laughs> oh, don't give me. Wait till we. You should show me your calves. If you got good calf muscles, no, he has over that. Oh, that's calves. that's my one thing. Bro, Why'd you bring it up? Terrible. Why'd you bring it show up? Show him your calves. I'm not showing show him, him my calves. Show him. Give me six months. Show and I'll show him. him my calves. They're like they're just like. He's got a private holes. Instagram oh, account for just calf work, oh, and he's been God. he's been uh, working on it for years. Wait, no, my, Sam, my only calves. Only They're not great. But we're working on them. We're working on the calves. But yeah. um, yeah, no, just that's really cool to hear because the realness has always been something that I've had a gut instinct to stick with. So it's cool to like hear that confirmation from you. This is the first time uh, that um, Sean has fangirled out a little bit. That's uh, so normally nice. Normally it's me. Sean, so, it's, so, it's so nice to finally meet you. And thank you. Thank you for the support and for watching and listening. It, it genuinely means oh, so wait, a lot. Oh, wait, Sean asked about baby advice. Yeah, any dad oh. advice? The number one baby... The number one advice we have is like, and it's so cliche, but just be so present in those newborn days because they flew by. Genuinely, we look back at old photos, like a baby photo of Jude will make me just cry instantly because I'm like, I wasn't, um, I wasn't like, shoot. Oh, no. I was like, I was so focused on business, like too much. So I wasn't like, I would like hold him and wait for him to nap just so I could go work more. But I wish at the time I was like enjoying it more so that so that you don't end up crying on a podcast one day. Here we are. <laughs> no, the anytime we get crying, we know our views are going to go up. So, yeah, so, going, thank, uh-huh. so thank you. <laughs> and don't go on tour for three and a half weeks because it was fun. But he missed uh, he missed a lot. I think you're doing it right. I think even if maybe there were some moments where I mean, where you, where you maybe think you weren't present. I have a feeling just watching you on social media. I have a feeling you're doing things wonderfully and the things you've said on the pod about the family business and everything. I, I, I think you got, I think you're crushing it in life in business. You're crushing it in life. You're probably crushing it even harder. Thank yeah. You. So thank and you. I know, I know what you mean. I look at those photos and I, I literally don't even remember. I'm like, I don't remember her looking like this. Right. It's and it's so like, obviously crazy. I remember when I see it, but I'm like, Oh man, that just feels like two different times. And kids are this funny thing where like, for me, at least all day, I'm like, Oh my God, I can't wait for you to go to sleep or just like get, yeah. to, get a moment of free time. And then as soon as we have free time, that's all, me and my wife talk about is it's like okay wait what do we want all this free time for all we're gonna do is talk about the kids anyways um like the funny things that they did today so it's like uh it's this cup that like you know you can never really fill up enough of but at the same time you're like um i don't know it's like this weird dueling thing i don't have like the words or the wisdom to like articulate it but i definitely feel it where it's uh you can never spend it's like an infinite amount of time you could spend but it's really not about the like you know the duration of the time it's kind of like did you kind of sink in and appreciate it versus yeah. um, just like being there? Because I've had many days where I spent hours and hours and hours, but I didn't really, like, I didn't really let it sink in. I, I, you know, I was just kind of passing the hours, which was a little bit different. So yeah, I, I read something mean. once where it's like, as soon as your kid is annoying you, put your phone down. Because if you're present in the moment, that kid isn't annoying. But if you're trying to multitask you're trying to be the else. whines and the, that's, that's when it becomes annoying. So we've done a really good job at like, as soon as the babysitter leaves at three, like we didn't, we're just fully present. We're not, but when he was a newborn, we weren't doing that as much. So you're going to have more. Um, I don't know if I want to go through the whole pregnancy thing again. It was really tough on me, especially mentally after I'm already a very anxious, uh, person. So I think having a newborn to care for while recovering from giving birth at home, um, was pretty intense for me. I don't know if I would want to do it again, but we'll see. I know we want to adopt. I've been looking at adoption websites. I literally lay in bed and like cry looking at them because I just want to adopt all of them. But yeah, I think we got to see our son. We got to see what our DNA would look like combined. He's so funny. He's he's amazing. He's, he's a little best. Connor. Um, but moving forward, I'm like, I don't know if I need that urge again. I think I would just like to adopt a little Vietnamese baby from where my grandma's from and honor her just- in that way. You got to make sure they can rap too. Yeah, if they can't rap, we're not. <laughs> I'll be part yeah, of the, the application. I'm like, can if, they, if they sing? can't use three syllable words by twelve months, they're out. Yeah. <laughs> if they can't play three different characters in the skit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't pass yeah. the test. Yeah, no, we, we definitely want looking more. for a versatile child to adopt. <laughs> yeah, we need some headshots. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys coming on. You're amazing. Oh my god, we appreciate you guys having us. Yeah, this is this is an honor. Thank you. I feel inspired talking to you. I imagine Sean, I imagine Sean does too. And uh, producer John Jonathan was texting me and he goes, I'm loving this. They're so damn likable. And oh, I have a feeling. Thank you, uh, Jonathan. That was my biggest fear, not being likable because I never really come on camera or do stuff like this. 
but I knew Sam. So I was like, okay, I know Sam. I want to do this. But normally I'm very fearful of criticism. I've always been pushing. I think you need to start like, like your own personal brand. Like you're, you're so knowledgeable in the music space that like, and, and you're always behind the scenes. No, no one knows who you are. No one knows how impactful you are and what I do. And I think, I think you need to start putting yourself out there. That's more, very nice. For sure. Well, totally. I mean, if you look at, um, the, their marriage didn't end well, so that's not the great example. But The Rock's wife, mm. uh, I forget her name. Dan, um, what is her name? They uh, got a Danielle. They did, yeah. That's but, so but, sad. but they still work together. They, they have an interesting dynamic. Oh, yeah. They cool. still work together. And she's known as being a pit bull. Like she is like feared in the industry. She's sharp. And I think she has more talent underneath her now. But that's like an interesting example, uh, other than the divorce thing, of, sure. uh, of, of the business going well. <laughs> besides that, besides that. Uh, we'll, we'll workshop uh, our, uh, our next analogy for, for you. <laughs> we can go back to the lab on that one. <laughs> sure. Well, and people people hate on Kris Jenner, but uh, in my opinion... I love I, I, Kris like, Jenner. I, I think I'm she's like, iconic. I don't know, man. She seems like she still has a pretty healthy... Maybe I don't agree with all the tactics, but her totally. kids and her have a great relationship, and it seems like it's worked really well, and everyone's provided for. I was interviewing a nanny that nannied for them, and I was like... I was like, I'm probably not going to hire her, but I did like five interviews just to dig for information about what they're like. Stop and it. she was like, I think by the third interview, she picked up that I only wanted to ask her questions about oh, what it was no. like there and um and i was like yeah i'm super curious can you just tell me some things and she was like Stop. not really and i was like okay i respect you for that that's that's fair uh, we like the kardashians i must, once made connor binge watch a whole season with me i, di- I didn't get no, the but- appeal at first and then afterwards i'm like oh i get they're it. all just killers like they, they, <laughs> it's crazy. they're all killers yeah like and you know you don't have to agree with all the sure. stuff they've done to do famous but they seem like they have a great They're doing relationship. Well. <laughs> they have yeah. great relationships. Uh, yeah, they all stick together. I li- the loyalty of that family seems strong. Um, well, thank you all for doing this. This is awesome. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Right, everybody go. TikTok, is that the first place you want people to follow you? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, just, um, well, honestly, I think. Um, oh, Instagram is safest. I was going to say streaming services. Just like oh. go, going to your favorite <laughs> streaming service, typing <laughs> yeah. my name. All Con- of it. Typing my name, Connor Price. You'll see all my songs there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, TikTok, Instagram. Oh, uh, you know YouTube. what? Can I plug one thing? Sure. Any streamers or video gamers, video uh, yes, creators yes. watching this, all of Connor's music is DMCA safe. So you oh, can put it in smart. your videos without copyright strike. You- yeah, I created a playlist on Spotify uh, under my channel that's called like DMCA safe copyright free where it's all of my songs that are copyright free. Because I have a few songs that I did with other artists and they have their labels get involved so you can't use them. But I have a list of all of the songs that you could use on your YouTube videos, your intros for your podcast, whatever you want, unlimited use. Um, Because I don't do YouTube ID. I think the long term value of having creators use your music is way more than like trying to get a few dollars every month because somebody used your song in a vlog. So, yeah, if you're a creator and you are looking for copyright free music, I have a bunch of that that I want people to use. And Brie, you're on Twitter, but you don't have any followers. You're like, you're, oh, I don't even, do I have a Twitter? I don't even know. Oh, I found it. I was going to say you should promote that because I bet a lot of people are going to want to DM you. Oh, I signed uh, up on threads. I have threads. Okay, hit her up on Threads. But Threads doesn't have DMs. You're going to get a lot of opportunities from this. You you just got the Brianna Price handle oh, on yeah, Instagram. Oh, yeah, I got my Brianna Price handle on Instagram. So, yeah, so just search her up on Instagram because you're then, definitely active there. Yeah, someday I want to. And I just got this Instagram handle I've been dying to get. It's called Home Studio because I want to start a, <clears throat> a newsletter for independent artists. And then eventually... Oh, I saw your newsletter. It's really horribly named, by the way. You need to change that name. <laughs> no, I stopped that. The independent one? Yes. I stopped okay. it. Yeah, That's done. Stopped. That's done. The idea was good. Thank you. The spelling was the Thank worst. Thank you. I know. I got, I got it. That's done. Don't worry. So I'm switching. I want to do home studio because I want to build a newsletter for independent artists and then also then turn that into a potential we sell like home studio kits where everyone's like, what mic do you use? I'm like, just buy Connor's kit. It comes with a mic, headphone, interface. Smart. Everything you can use to make money from home. And I'll record all my um, songs using that kit so it's, it sells itself. Um, amazing. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for coming on. I have a feeling that the next time you guys come on, you'll be 10 times bigger because you have the talent for it. And I think you've stumbled into something really, really amazing. And I think if you just keep going, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get really big. So thanks thank for coming so on. And thank uh, you. that's the episode. That's the pod. Awesome. That's thanks, the pod. Chris. Thank you. Thank you.